Well, this is what we have going here. We're starting now in the family room area and down towards the end where you can see those double doors way down there. The wood's going to extend from this room, go through the entryway, go through those double doors into a giant master bedroom area. Um, but this is kind of what we're going to start with right now. This will be the before with the carpeting down. And of course, later you'll get to see it with all the wood floors done. Well, we're getting ready to uh, hook on or start the tear out phase of the next part of this job. Um, as you can see right down here on this floor, we've already tore out the carpet, the tack strip, and we've uh, profiled concrete. Uh, the guys are tearing out the furniture now, and I'm just going to kind of do a quick walkthrough of what the before of it's going to look like. So, all this stone right through here is going to be removed right down to that back door over there. Um, so what we've got going through here, this is a pretty good sized master bedroom. Uh, it comes around over here. So all together, this master bedroom area going through that entryway, going out into that other room. It's about 1,300 feet. Um, we're probably going to be a good probably four or five days or so on the floor prep. If everything goes right, we'll have this all done in about two weeks completed. Well, we just pulled out the carpet in this uh, big master bedroom. And boy, look at the paint all kinds of it so we also have a couple control joints that we may have to do some sort of grinding on um, I can't tell but my eye eye says that there's going to be some floor prep going on here this is what we're going to start off with in this room a lot of contaminants that we have to get off the floor first Right now we're getting ready to prime. We've already floors uh, in the process. We ended up going over uh, several knots in the concrete. We already kind of took care of that. We don't think that there's any more major grinding left other than we're going to be using the uh, TPS machine and perhaps the uh, seven inch grinder at various times in order to blend all the, the screeds together. Wow, it's really drinking it up fast. We're going to probably have to do a couple coats on this. You can see right here already how he just put that on just a few seconds ago and it's already dried up, soaked in. Yeah, it's really soaking in. So this is a pretty giant area. All the wood's going to go all the way through those doors, all the way down to the other side. And then it comes around over to here too as well. So we're going to try to have all the floor prep done by this Friday. We'll just have to see. All right, so we have these screeds set up here. Um, we have the one going across. I'm going to kind of, if I can, I'm going to kind of slowly turn this here so you can kind of see what's happening here. Of course, you can probably see the lasers up on the screed. But look at all of a sudden the belly that we get to right here. That's about a half inch low. And yet we're only going to go about four feet right over to here. And that straight edge is just about touching that, that spot right there.
And so once again, you can see just how really cool this setup that we use with our screeds and how we precisely set them up. We create an artificial platform above the concrete and from there we are able to know exactly if something's too high and if it is we'll grind it down and then of course if it's too low then we know exactly how to fill it in. Um, so this is pretty much a foolproof method to make a super flat floor but it does require um, a large amount of patience and of course you have to invest in the aluminum screeds and the lasers and that sort of thing and I think that's kind of where we excel. We, we have put the money into the tools and the equipment to make a superior flat floor. This is something that you just can't get out of the average installer. There's just another little bit of a perspective here off to the side. We are using two 20 foot long screeds on each side and there's a 13 6 screed in between that we're using to uh, pour this initial flat area right here. What he's doing there, he just there's a control joint there that has a little bit of a gap. We're just kind of pre-dumping it in there to fill in that crack because it'll probably soak down in there a little bit. Later, after this is dry, tomorrow we can come around and fill in the edges using another screed and uh, just filling in the edges. Now that spot right over there that you can kind of see in the light, that's where the screed edge passed over the concrete and hit the actual grade of the concrete. So it, it kind of drugged the concrete there, which is okay. We're going to fix that all tomorrow with the TPS machine. Um, but that just kind of shows you what the concrete is doing. In some places, the concrete is great, and other places it just falls away. Um, that is concrete in Arizona for you. Okay, so we've, uh, we've just set up our screeds going the different direction. I kind of want to show what's going on here. If you kind of see down on the top, towards the top of that screed, you can see some red dots. That's the laser. You can see it slowly moving. Well, we're get, we've got it set up. We know exactly where it needs to be. And so the dots come around. You can see them coming over there. It's all at the same height that it should be. That's what really makes this system so amazing. You see the other dots coming along right through here? This floor, when we're done, um, we're, <laughs> these are giant runs. These are, this one across here is almost 30 feet long. We're gonna have this thing completely flat within 30 feet. And then when we go back in that direction, going that way towards the living room, We've probably got a good 60 to 80 foot run. We're going to literally be able to make that flat, completely flat all the way through there as well. So this is our system of our screeds with our lasers. We actually pioneered this method for residential. It's the, emo the most exact method uh, currently in existence right now for flattening concrete. We can preserve all the super critical ele elevations. Uh, like for example, if you have certain places that you have ceramic tile or stone, we know how to preserve those so that a T-molding will go down properly. Okay, um, 
I know that in this video you can clearly be able to see the, uh, the laser dots along here. What Marty's going to do, the, the reason you can see all those laser dots against the wall is because this, that 4 inch screed is sitting just a little bit too low. He's going to now raise it up to the proper height and when it's done, those little red dots will be about a sixteenth of an inch or so just below the very top of that screed. Once that gets into place, we know we have achieved the exact now you can kind of start to see those uh, little red dots there. Just going to bring it down. Right. There you go. So right there, we know that the screed is now set up perfectly level and flat in conjunction with all these other ones that we, and especially the ones that we've already uh, done our first pour and everything. So we just continue to bring these screeds down and eventually we are going to tie on back into that area over there. When this is done, seriously, this floor will be a sixteenth of an inch in probably 60 feet or 70 feet. That's how exact that we're going to really make this floor right here. Okay, the, uh, you can see these red dots on this one long, this is a 20 foot long screen. This is in the master. So, I'm going to show you where this laser is placed. The laser is actually placed <laughs> right over there. That's the laser there. And so Marty's going to spin the laser around back to the screws that sit way, way, way far back over there. And when those dots hit over there, now look at that. Check it out. So let me get a little bit closer. And you should be able to see those, those red dots on that, late, or on that screen there. So you can see how perfect our method is to create a flat floor and, and level. I mean, this whole floor is going to be perfectly level everywhere. All right, so I'm just going to kind of show you what the screen does along through here. Now down here, well, you can see my finger or not in there. That's uh, about a half of an inch. And uh, so we're going to be filling that all up. You can also probably see the lasers we go along through there. But you can see that this is all low back in through here. And we're getting ready to come back to our first pour that we kind of did yesterday. And you can already see now how flat the floor has, has gotten from our first pour. And come around over here. It's still touching really nice. Here's another 20 footer that's laying back on our existing spot. And then all of a sudden you'll see where the leveler started to taper away because it kind of flowed away from, the, from our pour. Now we're gonna start over here and fill this in. But check it out. See that? See the gap right there? That's three eighths of an inch. Right here is about a half of an inch. But check it out. In about two feet, watch this. In two feet, boom, now we're back at grade again. This entire entryway right here is pretty much grade. There's a couple places that are 16th inch low. But other than that, this whole entryway actually was ended up being great. So you can see how the concrete immediately just changes radically. Well, you could never lay wood floors over something like this. Well, at least you shouldn't. You'll get into a lot of trouble if you try that. So now we're getting ready to tie on uh, this one spread where I'm standing at right now, or this uh, one first street. So we're gonna go through this entryway and we're going to set it up and go right through that doorway and screed onto the other far, or far area that we've already done. So that way we'll tie all of these areas completely in together. And then the only thing left to do is, would be to go down that hallway where that vacuum is at and finish that off. If everything goes right, we should have all the, probably the edge work and everything done probably by tomorrow, which will be Friday. And I think Saturday we can TPS the whole thing and maybe even get some wood laid. Uh, we're, on we're on track to be done in about a little over a week with the entire job right now. 
Well, we're going to be laying wood through here soon, and we, we have finished up the floor prep. And I have a 20-foot screed in here that we've laid down, just kind of across here. And, you know, if you can just kind of check it out, it seriously just lays all the way along all this concrete, all the way. So we, we use the lasers to set all this up from this point here all the way through those doors, way down there. It's probably a good 60 or 70 foot run. We actually leveled this entire floor everywhere to the same height because um, we had the luxury of being able to connect all these areas together. So this straight edge would lay exactly the way, as flat as you see it, everywhere. So what you're looking at here, you're probably, you see this staggered area of wood that's already been installed against the wall in these little shelves there. And then you see an area that has the glue and the wood's not installed. And you're probably thinking, well, why in the heck didn't you just start off from the existing wood that you see right here and just take off and go towards the wall? The reason is, is because that would have made it extremely difficult to get on those areas. Um, we would have probably had some bleed through through some of the joints. So we pre-build the whole area and then as we take it out, we start in the back area towards the, the cabinets, the shelves, and the wall, and we start installing the wood, but we, we push them back towards there by about an extra quarter of an inch. This allows us to spread the glue a little at a time, install the wood, and then finally when we get out to this area here, now we're back on solid stuff, uh, solid wood. And the last few rows that we put in, there is enough room left to put those wood in, and then we take all of the sections with a little pry bar and it just scoots them all back about a quarter of an inch to where everything is tight. And then we'll put the spacers in around the edges to hold it into place and of course use blue tape. It's really, really kind of cool and not a lot of people know how to do this. So I just wanted to point out, hey, once again, this is how we are different. Well, this is the completed master bedroom area. As you, as you can see, it has completely changed the whole look, having this wood floor in here. It took us, from the time we got the floor prep done, it took us three days to lay the wood floor and put on the new baseboards in this area. So it went pretty fast as far as the installation goes. I'll start walking a little bit more here. And this is called Smooth Sailing from Gemwoods. TriWest Distributing is the distributor here in Phoenix. I do all my business with TriWest. They're great. Over here you can see this is the hearth that we undercut. It looks just like the hearth has been built right on top. And the wood actually extends under it slightly. There is an expansion gap even though it looks like it's cut tight. And out there you can still see that we're still doing some work. Uh, this job was so large we wanted to get the master bedroom done first so that the clients could move back in. I'll, uh, tomorrow, which will be Friday, I will take the final video of everything. So you can kind of look way, 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 way back through those doors. You can see that's the area that we completed as of yesterday. And uh, the, the, this area was such a large area that we wanted to get the customers back in there. But this is kind of what it looks like still in an area that we're actually still working in. This is kind of what it looks like on a live job setting. Um, I know you see some of those other commercials out there where it shows these really tailored uh, guys in these ties or whatever and putting down the last little piece of carpet or whatever and it looks, everything looks pristine. Well, it doesn't... It just, it's not like that the whole job. This is what a job setting looks like. And there's a lot of equipment and a lot of tools and there's a lot of thought that goes into doing this inside of a home without destroying the contents inside of a home. Just thought everybody should kind of see it from that perspective. 
So this is kind of how we finish off the baseboards. They're really, really meticulously caulked. Uh, when, when we're done, you can't even really see that there's any caulking down on the bottom of the baseboards. But, but the reason that we do that is so that no bugs or no dirt or anything can start accumulating uh, up underneath there. Um, and it's just a very, very clean look. Our baseboard installations are amazing. In fact, when we do wood installations, um, we almost always recommend the people to discard their current baseboards because they've probably been painted, you know, two or three or four times, you know, throughout the 15 or 20 years that they've probably been down. And it's just not worth even trying to save them. Just throw them away. Um, we can get really uh, nice baseboards, uh, you know, five inch or so baseboards to put back down and they're beautiful. It's just not worth saving the old ones, trust me. Even after you try to sand them and all that other stuff, they just don't have the same look as a, as a new baseboard would have after it's freshly painted. And here we go, it's, uh, it's final. We are just now done with this job. We're getting ready to put the furniture back. Uh, just as, this is a shot looking out to the back door. This did have travertine stone in it where I'm standing and all the way down through here. Um, this is the area right over here. Um, I consider this probably the uh, family room area. It's a pretty good size area. Turned out real sweet. Brand new baseboards. So here's the master bedroom area that we also completed. This job was a total of a, a little over 2,000 square feet. And with the floor preparation and uh, the flooring removal, new baseboards and that sort of thing, we had about 19, 18 or 19 working days in this job. We did work every day with the exception of Sunday to do all this here. So you can just see how beautiful, you can see how flat the floor is from the sheen that's in from the light. This floor has been leveled to a sixteenth of an inch and fifty linear feet. This is looking into the master bedroom, as you can see through here. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start walking in through here a little bit. What a nice room for wood floors. Wouldn't you agree? Right down there is a hearth that we also had to undercut. And right in the centerway, right where this one piece of carpet is right there, that was all stone. Of course, everybody remembers that most likely. Now it's all wood. And uh, we do this right here. So this is what we got going on here. Right through here. Um, the very, very first phase of the job was right through here. And Marty's over there right now doing the finishing touches of putting all the furniture back and cleaning it up. This was a fun job. We enjoyed this one. It's just a great, great job to work on. I couldn't resist. I just wanted to take another one. This is the living room. This is the first area that did that we did when we were here the first week. And now that the furniture is put back, I mean, you can just you can just see how this wood floor has really enhanced the look and the feel of this house. Um, without a doubt, it's raised the, the value of the home for sure.